Hello and welcome. My name is Kathy A. and today I'm going to take you on a little journey through the world of Laura Mercier. Now this brand is well known as being a very age-friendly brand, but the price points are a little bit high, so a lot of folks have never really ventured off into trying the products. Um, many people like myself started off with just the finishing powder because this is kind of a legendary product and I think from there you know as they came out with different things different foundations and CC creams and things like that some of us tried them some of us didn't um, I have now been convinced that this is probably one of the best brands on the market if you have aging skin it's absolutely fabulous and what I'm going to do first is tell you the story of Laura Mercier and just go through her history of the brand and how it all got started and then I'm going to do a full face tutorial so I can show you how I got from this to this. So let's have a look at the story of Laura Mercier. The story of Laura Mercier begins with this lady, born Michelle Mercier in Provence, France. This young lady loved to paint and draw and dreamed of growing up to be an artist one day. As a teenager and young woman, she actually enrolled in design school in Paris to learn more about oil painting and art. But the practical side of her and kind of the independent woman part of her thought the only way she's going to get a really good job is to work doing something else so she can do her painting on the side. She had an interest in makeup, a uh, kind of passing interest in makeup, and decided to enroll in the Caritas School for Beauty to be an esthetician and a beauty artist. She wound up doing quite well there and in France beauty has a different face. Beauty has a face that is not overly made up or cakey. It's a cultural thing. The men like to touch the woman's face and feel skin, not cakey, overdone makeup. So uh, a strong lip and perfect skin was kind of the rule of thumb in France. And this is why tinted moisturizers were quite popular in that country and in Europe in general. They later would take off in America. Now, learning to be a makeup artist, um, Michelle was quite good at it. And when Thibault Valbray, who was a famous makeup artist at the time, bought the school, he realized her teaching potential and hired her on after her graduation as both the teacher and as a makeup artist. The salon often had celebrity guests, and one of them was this actress called Michelle Mercier. Now, believe it or not, our Michelle Mercier makeup artist decided to change her name to Laura so that she would not interfere with their very famous client when she came into the salon. So Laura Mercier was born. Mr. Vabre was a very famous makeup artist and also now as the new owner of the school, they were often asked to do outside projects for businesses in France. Elle magazine wanted to launch in America and so they wanted to send a team from Vabre's school to go over and get some models ready and get some shoots done so they could prep for American Elle to be released. They went to New York City and he brought with him of course, our Laura Mercier and a hairstylist and a couple of other makeup artists. Laura soon found out that she loved doing this, except these were all test models and they spent a lot of time making up about 50 girls and they would take Polaroid pictures of these girls and then throw out into the trash the ones that they didn't want to use for the spread. Photographer there was Stephen Mizell and he befriended Laura Mercier. Stephen had a lot of clout in America. He was on lots of famous shoots and he was known by celebrities and models alike. He really liked Laura's style and took her often with him. And she found that there was a lot of difficulty finding a good quality makeup that would last through hot lights and sand and water and 
all of the things that models had to go through and still look natural and dewy. So she found a camouflage product that was actually medical grade and used on burn victims and from plastic surgeons who used it on their scar victims. The L project was a success and Laura worked on many covers not only for Elle but she worked with Stephen for Vogue magazine and Allure, Seventeen magazine, Vanity Fair, Glamour magazine and she also did uh, projects on the side for Clairol, L'Oreal, both the makeup and the hairlines and Maybelline. They were kind of trying to shake off that uh, 80s look. She also did a lot of runway work for Fashion Week and she did projects for stores like Banana Republic, Bloomingdale's, Bergdorf Goodman, and Victoria's Secret. She worked on ad campaigns for Chanel and when she became really famous, she was sought after by many people. Stephen decided to refer her for celebrity work. And the very first celebrity he decided she would be good to be the makeup artist for was Madonna. She met Madonna. She was terrified, but Madonna was really nice to her. And the very first video she worked on with her was Take a Bow. The iconic look of this makeup uh, caused a three-year relationship between Laura and Madonna as her makeup artist and then she went on of course she did other celebrity work Sarah Jessica Parker, a very young Kate Moss, Meg Ryan, we had Ashley Judd, Julia Roberts, Celine Dion and Brooke Shields from her magazine work, Meryl Streep, Isabel Rossellini, Susan Sarandon and Juliette Binoche. She was becoming a little bit frustrated with the makeup that was available for her to use for different projects and it was during her ad campaign for Elizabeth Arden that she realized she really wanted to maybe think about having her own makeup line. Laura had very little money of her own to invest in this and she was approached by Janet Gerwich who was a former vice president of Neiman Marcus to start her own line. She agreed to work with Janet as long as she had full control over the product and Laura Mercier Cosmetics was launched in 1996. Like co-makeup artists Bobby Brown and also Kevin Aquan the trend was kind of moving away from the 80s Art Deco look and moving more natural. Laura decided to create a cosmetic line that would be first a flawless face and second adding in some color. They recruited a very particular set of models who had very beautiful skin because the basis of the entire Laura Mercier line is having a flawless face first the canvas from which everything else can work from. The very first product launch was Camouflage. This was her concealer palette and it came in several different shades and the tinted moisturizer which was quite iconic at the time there were no other tinted moisturizers. Her product line took off in popularity and there was an elegance and a luxury about this line that just attracted very iconic women and having 24 shades of foundation was considered quite groundbreaking at the time. With each collection over the years and celebrity endorsements, Laura Mercier became quite famous amongst the celebrity and women of wealth. She decided to write a book in 2006 called The New Beauty Secrets, Your Ultimate Guide to a Flawless Face. Many of her releases coincided with popular movies of the day and she was considered bridal makeup, especially by one very special bride. Yes, when Kate Middleton revealed that she had done her own makeup and had used some Laura Mercier products, it was all a rage to copy that look. Laura is a very charitable person and when Shannon Miller, who is a very decorated Olympic athlete, asked her to join in on the Ovarian Cancer Awareness Fund. 
she graciously donated uh, proceeds from the sale of a special kit and lipstick and also of a special bracelet which was designed by a friend of hers from Poland. Proceeds went to the charity. Laura Mercier's brand empowers women to feel their best and look their best and her products are innovative and beautiful. Her caviar sticks unbelievably wonderful. Her lip products and her new different ad campaigns. The mascara is nice. And look at the artwork, the artistry of these products. There's even nail polish and she's add bronzer to the line and she also has a lot of bath products and skin care. And recently she actually introduced a perfume. Now her brushes are somewhat legendary and they're all based quite affectionately on her oil painting brushes. There seems to be something for everyone in this line, both edgy and also conservative. Now Laura still continues to be a makeup artist and she's very involved with the line creating new products and we're very very happy. She has a couple of guys that are uh, spokespersons and makeup artists who travel around the world promoting her brand. She has a website where you can see uh, lots of videos and see all the products. She continues to be an innovative and indispensable part of the makeup industry. We do thank Laura Mercier for her classy and wonderful line. Now here's a demo that I did using all Laura Mercier products. Starting off, we've got the eye base in the color wheat. And the eye bases are a very creamy formula as a lid primer. They come in different shades and this is kind of a medium shade. I think the lighter shade might be a little more flattering for me, but this is a free gift. So this is the foundation primer. There's a couple different ones. There's a radiance one that's really nice. This one is called Protect. It has an SPF in it, and it's really good if you don't have an SPF in your foundation. It's kind of a creamy uh, based formula. It is not silicone feeling or anything. All right, this is the first silk cream moisturizing foundation and the color is creamy ivory they actually did the Sephora IQ uh, machine on me to come up with this one it's a very creamy formula and I'm using a damp beauty blender sponge to uh, apply this and it looks like it's a maybe a half a shade to a shade dark for me but that's the, the IQ thing at Sephora is never really completely on being as it is spring going into summer, I'm going to keep this. So I do like it. It went on very fast. There's a slightly illuminating um, texture to that. Now this is the illuminating tinted moisturizer. This is the new one. And this is the second color in the line. It's called Natural Radiance. And this one is very, very sheer, I notice, and very, very shiny. And although I am older and I don't mind a little radiance on my skin, I just found that this was just a little bit too shiny a finish. Those of you who have oily skin or an oily T-zone will not like this at all. I mean, it blended nicely using a beauty blender, but when I tried using my fingers for this, it did look a little patchy and it clung to dry patches on my skin. So, looking at both sides, they look very similar, but I can tell you the foundation, silk cream foundation side is much better. There I am, checking it all out, looking to see if it fell into the ridges and St. Bernard lines. And Okay, finished poking around. Boy, don't I look like I was road hard and put away wet. Okay, this is the secret concealer. This is um, for under eye, and this is a new color they just uh, introduced called Point five which is less than one it is the lightest shade that they have and I'm doing a semi raccoon eye thingy here 
with this concealer. It did not go into the lines. It did not crease. It was very, very moist. And this is one of those products that was a staple to her collection. This is what helped build her empire. So this concealer is outstanding. Going into Second Skin Cheek Color, and this is Rose Bloom. This is kind of a warm pink color. It's highly pigmented, and I haven't really found a good way to put this on yet where it doesn't look a little too strong. This is the Contour Palette, and these are cream contour shades for every skin tone available. So I'm just going to kind of put it on there in advance, and then I'll smooth it out you can see that the contour shade is a very grayish color brown and I'm going to use the reddish rose colored one up on uh, the edges of my forehead and I will use a contour blending brush on one side and on the jawline there trying to get rid of some of those double chins and I'm going to use my fingers to blend which I think is the best way to blend this on that side and just in case the wind takes my hair they will see a little bit of bronzing around the edge. Now I really like the contour palette a lot and this is a very pretty highlighter very much like Hourglass uh, powders except it's a cream. Very very nice. Now this is the the setting powder in ivory and this is kind of a phenomenal product. This of course also is another one of her groundbreaking products that she came out with way back when she first started the line and I'm just powdering everything up because I just think I look way too shiny and even though I look like I'm using a lot of force I'm just lightly kind of powdering over this is a caviar stick these are um, eye shadows and they're very very creamy this one is sugar frost which is a very light uh, golden uh, pale color there is a shimmer in there and I'm just using a brush to kind of blend it in to my lid a little more and it's somewhat pigmented now I really like this this is the baked eye color the color is called hot chocolate it is a wet dry color so you can spray your brush and then put it in there and get a far more intense color or a liner this is a perfect crease color I think and I love the name hot chocolate that's great and I'm kind of finding it hard to believe that I just put a little bit on and it's pretty well blended and it's all set. I usually have to spend quite a while working on my eyes so this was an extremely nice product. I really like it a lot. Going into another caviar stick, this color is plum and it is a dark satiny looking shade. Now I'm just going to put a blob on the outer corner of each eye and then I'm going to blend it in. I know it looks crappy right now but I will work on it. I'm just using a little brush to kind of blend in the end and go up into the crease just a little bit for the outer corner. And I'm fussing with it a little bit. It blends out nicely. It dries to a beautiful finish and it lasts all day. I absolutely love the finish from this. It is almost worth the $28 price point. Now I'm going to use it again just slightly lining the outer third of the lower lid and I'm just going to smudge that out just a little bit with a pencil brush. There is no fallout from the shadows and the uh, caviar sticks are just gorgeous. And I'm just going to play a little bit more with that. And I'm going to take the um, liner brush and just go on that and go right up close to my lashes with it. Since it is a little bit wider than the stripe I want to make on my lash line, I'm using a brush to do that. But I am using the product on the brush. It's very versatile. I really like that. This is the eyebrow pencil in Fair Blonde and it comes with its own fancy dancy uh, sharpener. It's very nice. It's kind of a waxy blonde. There are several shades of this. They have a blonde and then they have a fair blonde shade. This is the fair blonde. It's got a slightly golden tint to it, so those of you who are looking for more ashy might want to go with a traditional blonde on this. 
On the other end, there's a really nice spoolie to blend that out. And there's that sharpener. On a side note, I did have this iArt Artist palette, but I found the colors were way too cool for me, so I did return it. Okay, now we are um, curling the lashes, and I'm just doing one eye at a time. I'm curling uh, the lashes and using the full blown Volume Supreme Lash Building Mascara. This comes in black only. It's kind of a standard brush. It makes a pretty good honkin' lash. The formula's nice. Um, I see nothing wrong with this mascara, but it was, I believe, $27, so that I would find wrong with this mascara. <laughs> but it did, it did last all day. It did not leave any flecks on my eyes. It was pretty good on a hot summer day. It did not uh, smear on me. So it's very nice. It's a very qu nice quality mascara. And it did not leave my lashes crispy like some of them can do. So it did a pretty good lash, but I had to do three coats to get the kind of lash that I wanted. And it's got kind of a natural bristle brush. Going into lips, I did not have a lip liner, so I used my Too Faced lip liner in Perfect Nude. Going into lipstick, this is the Cream Smooth Lip Color in Lychee Parfait. And this is a your lips but way the heck better color. It's absolutely gorgeous. It lasts all day. It's very work friendly color. Very pretty. Going over with the Lip Glossé, and this is called Bear Baby. It smells like cupcakes. Really nice. Now she has a beautiful perfume called Ombre Passion, I believe, and I couldn't find it, so I'm just using Fresh in Life. And just for fun, the Kiss Trio Lashes. I'm using one short and one medium length on each eye. These are the Trio Lashes. And this process is always a little bit uh, tedious. And those of you who have tried putting lashes on know exactly what I'm going through. Sometimes it goes on easy, sometimes it goes on rough. I find that these little lashes are actually harder to put on than a, a strip lash that goes all the way across your eye. So I'm just uh, waiting for the glue to dry. Wind up using my finger, waiting for the glue to dry, and looks like I've got it there. Gonna take out my hair so I look like a human being, and voila! There are presently um, some Sephora videos with Laura Mercier in them speaking, so you may want to have a, a quick look at that and she explains some of her makeup techniques. Um, I'm so impressed with this line and especially, um, I really think this could be the Holy Grail concealer. I'm absolutely loving this concealer and um, even rivaling my Urban Decay naked skin. So. Um, I was a little disappointed in the this side, which is the Radiance uh, BB Cream. I think that's the newest of the line. Uh, this one was in Natural, which is the second color. I think there were five or six colors of this, and this was the second one on here. It was very shiny and very sheer, and I wasn't really that happy with it. And it also seemed to show a little bit of patchiness, so I would not recommend this one. Uh, the foundation, this is the moisturizing one, this is the Silk Cream Moisturizing Foundation and this is the new one that they added to the line this year. I really like this a lot and I was matched by Sephora, that darn IQ thing, you know, when they take a little cotton ball and rub your makeup off and then they stick you with this thing that looks like, you know, some kind of decoder and then they take pictures all over your face and come up with whatever skin type color with whatever you're supposed to be and they came up with cream ivory as my color and it is slightly dark but I really like it and I'm going to keep it actually there is not one thing from this line that I'm going to return that's how much I love this stuff and you know it's, you know me I'm the return queen <laughs> I take everything back but I absolutely love everything I think I'm going to try a few more of the lipstick colors um, actually the only thing this was a free gift, so I can't really take this one back, but the, um, the lip gloss, it smelled like cupcakes. It's nice, it's not tacky or anything, 
but I mean to me lip gloss you can find anywhere so I think this is the only one out of the line I, I really wouldn't recommend now the caviar sticks are their silky creamy um, eyeshadows now this one is called plum and it's absolutely gorgeous on it lasts well you can tight line with it also I did not but you can and uh, my only complaint about them is the lack of color choice. There weren't that many colors of it. This is a lot like uh, Kitten from, from Stila. Now these, the only complaint I have heard about them is that for the price point, which is $28, um, for the price point, you don't get a lot of product. You get a half an ounce, I think, something like that. So there isn't a lot in here, Shades of It Cosmetics. So, I don't know. If anything does go back, it might be one, one or both of these because I have so many eyeshadows. But I do like the way it blended out. Um, it's, it's just an amazing product. And um, the word velvety, the word buttery, those things come to mind when you're using these products because they really do feel buttery and velvet, velvety and they last. I mean, it just there's just a certain luxuriousness to them and there is a difference between this and drugstore now I've had this Laura Mercier thing I think I got this at Sephora in the impulse aisle this is the tinted moisturizer this is just the basic tinted moisturizer and this is fine I've liked it you know I just figured I would try the other types you know the lustrous tinted moisturizer and then the uh, creamy moisturizing foundation I just wanted to try different products so I think out of all of them, I do like the moisturizing foundation the best. Second would be the tinted moisturizer. And then again, I would not recommend that luminous, radiant, whatever it's called, stuff that they just came out with. That it just And it costs more. I mean, these, these are around the $48 price point, so eek. Now this contour palette, I've had a lot of fun with. Um, the packaging is a little on the flimsy side. When I opened up the mirror to just hold it back so I could work on this, it's it's cracked the whole edge here. So the packaging, eh, and I'm, you know, it's cute, but there's not, I'm not sure I'm really using these inner colors. I did attempt to use them as eyeshadows. I did try, and they actually do work as eyeshadows, but not really good. They're like cream eyeshadows, but they don't blend in with other things very well, and they don't look good on their own. You need other things to make them look better. This highlighter is awfully pretty. It's just a very subtle glow, very much like the Hourglass Ambient Powder kind of look to it. It is not a stripe of shininess on your face. It is a glow, and it just, it just looks beautiful on, so I think this contour palette is definitely something I'm so glad I got because I do use it and this color that is the main contour color it really does look like a shadow which is what a contour should do it should look like a shadow it shouldn't look like an extension of your blush or a dark red or a dark orange and a lot of people use bronzers here in the in this area in the, fish face area because they want to have a darker contrast so that it looks like geometrically that your face has a better bone structure. But I find that when you use a contour that's meant to be a contour and not an overall orangey golden bronzer uh, that you have a better result. I just think it looks more natural. So all in all this is a fabulous brand and she's a fabulous lady. It's cruelty free and you know you can't ask for more than that. <laughs> super duper. Until next time, I hope you've enjoyed this special. I'm Laura Mercier. My name is Kathy A. Have a beautiful day. Take care. Toodles.